It turns out that when you study, even superficially, the history of various ancient cultures, you can find throughout history evidence of aerial objects that were unidentified dating all the way back to the beginning of written history. The ancient Mesopotamians, the ancient Egyptians, the uh, ancient Indians, the Hindu uh, religion, ancient Japan, the Americas, and many, many other cultures spoke about flying chariots, celestial cars, winged disks, luminous cloud ships, and glowing apparitions throughout history that terrified mankind. They indeed have affected all the continents over the history of recorded history. When we look at the ancient folklore, as many have done, Jacques Vallée, in his book, Passport to Magonia, Jacques Vallée, by the way, is the French astronomer and a mathematician from France. He was portrayed in the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, a very scientific guy. He wrote a, um, a book called Passport to Magonia, first in 1969 and then revised it in 1993. And he examined all of the folklore uh, worldwide and stated that the folklore of every culture, it turned out, had a rich reservoir of stories of humanoid beings that flew in the sky, used devices that seemed in advance of the technology of the time. Another gentleman by the name of I.D. E. Thomas, who's a Christian uh, pastor, he wrote a book called The Omega Conspiracy in 1986. And in his book, he also documented extensively the existence of unidentified flying objects that have affected mankind through history. And he said this, speaking about a document that was part of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Genesis Apocryphon, it was called. He said the copy of the Genesis Apocryphon discovered at Qumran dates back to the second century BC. He says, when scholars finally made public its contents, the document confirmed that celestial beings from the skies had landed on planet Earth. More than that, it told how these beings had mated with the Earth women and had begat giants. Two other Christians, John Weldon and Zola Levitt, wrote a book in 1975 called UFOs, What on Earth is Happening? And on page 21, they said this, UFOs seem to have been around for a long time. We can find odd references to circles of fire in the sky in many historical documents and even in cave paintings. While we seem to be experiencing a great upsurge in reported sightings in our own day, every age seems to have had similar stories. From the mythology of ancient Assyria, we see a lot of inscriptions and reliefs on stone that depicted what they believed were flying gods in ancient time. From the mythology of ancient Assyria, approximately in the 8th century BC, we find the story of Asher, the winged god of war. This ancient deity is typically represented as a humanoid form with a bow in hand and adjacent to a winged disc. There's the actual, um, oh, this, I'm sorry, this is a different one. Uh, according to many scholars, Asher was an adaptation of this uh, ancient uh, flying deity called Ahura Mazda, who was embraced by the prophet Zoroaster in the sixth century BC. In this stone relief, we can see a um, uh, supposed flying god with what is supposed to be a disc with wings. It's interesting, when you look at the ancient cultures, you find a lot of these types of inscriptions of uh, humanoid-type deities that were depicted as being flying deities, with, uh, often with disks or with other types of uh, craft. Sometimes uh, some of the ancient Hindu stuff shows what looked like small, almost flying vehicles, flying cars. This is a color version of the ancient god Ahura Mazda. When we look at the myths and the legends of ancient Egypt, we also find an abundance of stories about flying deities who flew with winged disks, flying chariots, and the like. Many, including several Christian scholars, have interpreted these sightings as being probably ancient UFOs. According to Egyptian mythology, 
The sun god, known as Ra, is lord of the universe and flew in what they thought was a celestial boat. He is usually depicted, Ra, the sun god, is usually depicted with a human body with the head of a hawk. Horus was the descendant of Ra and the son of Isis, the nature goddess, and Horus was the god of the sky, of light, and of goodness, according to Egyptian mythology. Horus was usually depicted as a falcon or as a falcon-headed man. And according to Egyptian mythology, Horus was one of the gods who flew on the winged disk of Ra, which shined with many colors. In the hieroglyphs in the temple at Edfu, we read an inscription about Horus. It says, so Horus, the winged measurer, flew up towards the horizon in the winged disk of Ra. Then Horus, the winged measurer, reappeared in the winged disk which shined with many colors. And he came back to the boat of Ra, the falcon of the horizon. And Toth said, O Lord of the gods, the winged measurer has returned in the great winged disc, shining with many colors. So it's a pretty fascinating description. Flying discs in ancient Egypt. We have supposedly flying discs today. Now we don't interpret them as gods. We make t-shirts and pins and uh, posters and uh, write books about these uh, alien entities, but the ancients believed, if indeed this is what was visiting in ancient times, believed that they were gods and worshipped them. We could go to the ancient Hindu mythology. In an ancient Hindu text called the Rig Veda, which was approximately 1300 to 1000 BC, we read of flying lightning cars which were flown by flying gods of ancient times. It says, the valiant god, his car ascends, swept by his fervid bounding speeds. Athwart the sky, the hero speeds. On flashing lightning cars they ride and gleam in warlike pomp and pride. The lions roar their voice of doom with iron force their teeth consume. The hills, the earth itself, they shake all creatures at their coming quake. And also in the epic of ancient India, the Mahabharata, it says that the gods in cloud-borne chariots came into view the scene so far. Bright celestial cars in concourse sailed upon the cloudless sky. Or we could go to the legends of the ancient Incas, the Aztecs and the Mayas, as well as the North American Indians. There are legends of ancient star beings who visited planet, planet Earth in ancient times from the star system Pleiades. In an article entitled ETs from the Pleiades by Robert Stanley in Unicus Magazine, volume four, 1995, page 26 and 27, he states this. He states, he states religious legends of the pre-Inca people state that the universe was inhabited by gods and celestial beings who arrived on earth from the Pleiades. In Bolivia, near Lake Titicaca, are the ruins of the megalithic city of Tiwanaku. Many of the city walls were constructed from blocks that weigh 60 tons, which were further reinforced by metal clamps. Legends relate how it was built in one night by mysterious bearded white men who were giants from Taurus, the constellation of the Pleiades. They, also believed that to, they, are, they are also believed to have descended from the clouds and to have had sexual intercourse with Incan women. Now Chuck spoke about Genesis chapter 6, about how the sons of God saw the daughters of men and came down. And these were fallen angels, and they interacted with and apparently even interbred with mankind and produced supernatural offspring. And what we see when we look at the legends of planet Earth is the same story, that beings from the heavens in our ancient past visited planet Earth, interacted with, according to some legends, helped build the pyramids, and produced supernatural, interbred with mankind and produced supernatural offspring. The ancients, of course, worshipped them as gods. In the city of Teo, Teo, Teoacan, a Mexican archaeological site about 25 miles northeast of Mexico City, are the remains of the earliest city in the Western Hemisphere. Among its monuments are the Pyramid of the Sun, the Pyramid of the Moon, and the Avenue of the Dead. The exact period of its, of its construction is not known. The majority of scholars believe that it flourished around 200 BC, and some believe it may have been built as early as 4000 BC. 
When the, Ag when the Aztecs arrived in the 12th century AD, the city, of, the city was already in uh, ruins. The identity of the, builder, the builders of this city, uh, the largest pre-Columbian era, the largest city in the pre-Columbian era is a complete mystery to this day. However, there's a fascinating legend passed down from BC times, from before the time of Christ, which asserts that the city and its massive pyramids were built by giants. And indeed, the notion that the great monuments on planet Earth was built by giants is found throughout the mythology. Now we know, of course, in the Bible, it says there were giants in the land in those days, and also after that, as Chuck spoke about. So that's some of the ancient, uh, some of the ancient stories about beings from the heavens visiting planet Earth and interacting with, interbreeding with, and assisting mankind in the past. Eric Von Donegan, in his book Gods from Outer Space in 1972, summarized the history of planet Earth in this time. He said this, Ancient Sumerian records tell of gods descending from the stars and fertilizing their ancestors. This interbreeding of gods from heaven and women from earth is supposed to have produced the first men upon the earth. The native inhabitants of Malakula in the New Hebrides believed that the first race of men were direct descendants of the sons of heaven. From India comes the Mahabharata and other ancient Sanskrit texts which tell of gods begetting children with women of earth and how these children inherited the supernatural skills and learning of their fathers. A similar mythology is found in the epic of Gilgamesh where we read of watchers from outer space coming to planet earth and producing giants. An early Persian myth tells that before the coming of Zoroaster, demons had corrupted the earth and allied themselves with women. So the story that we see in the Bible of these sons of God visiting planet Earth and interacting with and interbreeding with mankind is something which is also echoed in the legends of mankind's history. In a recent book called Alien Agenda, written in 1997 by Jim Mars, on page 55, Jim Mars spoke about this common thread as well. He says, as the similarities, similarities of widely spread cultures continue to be appreciated, a pattern of common worldwide connections is emerging. Egyptian legends tell of the Tep Zepi, or the first time, an age when sky gods came down to earth, raised the land up from under the mud and water, flew through the air in flying boats. It is intriguing to note that these ancient gods displayed very human attributes. They required food and clothing. They liked to imbibe wine and were not above consorting with comely young ladies. Alien Agenda, page 55. So the ancient evidence shows many ancient cultures recorded visitations of beings from the heavens. Often these beings are described as flying on a variety of craft. They interacted with, helped, and even interbred with mankind, and they produced offspring that were supernatural, often described as giants. Okay, let's come to the modern era. Of course, we're here in Roswell, New Mexico in 1997 to talk about UFOs on the 50th anniversary of what was believed to be a UFO crash here in Roswell. Well, it turns out that the modern era of UFOs actually began couple of weeks earlier. On June 24, 1947, Kenneth Arnold sighted fly, fly, or nine flying saucers near Yakima, Washington. It was widely reported in the press. Arnold was ridiculed extensively by uh, people in the media, and ultimately he said after the experience that he would not report a flying 10-story building if he saw it, <laughs> because he was ridiculed by so many people. And of course, in July 1947, something crashed in Roswell, New Mexico. And uh, I have no idea what it was. Does anybody out here? <laughs> but the key thing about Roswell was that it began really the era of the government cover-up. If it was just a balloon, why were there bodies? And why was there a huge government cover-up that persists to this day? It's interesting that the recent story that the government has come out with, the notion that they were dummies thrown from a balloon, which didn't start till 1953, but uh, 
the cover story was created to explain away the existence of bodies and of some type of a craft. So whatever crashed in Roswell in 1947, the important point was that it began an era of intense government cover-up of the whole UFO phenomenon. 